I think of the people who are here, uh, possibly uh, Call India is only organization which is specifically a user. Some of you must have seen our uh, very well uh, laid out uh, stall by our uh, CMPDL in, in our exhibition, which also gives a glimpse of what exactly we in Call India are doing, also what kind of potential it holds uh, for the application of geospatial technology in our company. The significance of uh, coal in uh, the Indian economy needs no emphasis. Possibly, if I may say so without referring to the numbers, it is the Coal India and Indian Railways, possibly the single uh, entities which contributes most to the GDP as a single entity, not as a sector. Now, in the country, though 200,000 megawatt uh, installed capacity, the total power generation capacity, 60% of that, that is 120,000 is coal-based, of which I am very happy to share before you that uh, around 81% of the coal in the country to the power sector and other sectors is being supplied by us. So how crucial is the coal for the economy and how crucial is Coal India for the economy is very clear from this simple uh, statement. So that also puts a huge amount of responsibility on our shoulders to cope up with the growing demand. In fact, uh, the 11th fire plan, we expected, we targeted a growth of about 9% uh, CAGR, but unfortunately we ended up uh, somewhere around 4.2, 4.3. That's the reason. Lot is talked about installed, uh, you know, idle power capacities and lots of problems downstream, upstream, etc. The current fire plan, whatever lessons we have learned from the last fire plan, we hope to do better. We have uh, taken a target of 615 million tons by the terminal year of the current year, which calls for a CAGR of close to 8 percent. Why I'm referring to these numbers is the when Traditionally, our growth rate has been 3 to 4 percent. Business as usual was okay in order to achieve that kind of targets. But when we are talking about double the rate of growth, the business as usual is not really going to help us. And also, increasingly and rightly, the expectations of the communities in the surrounding areas and overall national expectation that Companies like Coal India, though unfortunately called upon to do some not very pleasant job, needs also to be very responsible, particularly environmentally responsible, socially responsible. Professor Rajan has uh, uh, mentioned, uh, uh, used the word uninformed activism. Yes, in several places we do have informed activism and also uninformed activism. Now, application of our commitment in the company is that Unless we improve the ambience in terms of the environmental preservation, conservation, and also mitigating the adverse effects of this mining on the local communities, we cannot call this as a sustainable development. We do face lots of uh, roadblocks from various quarters, some for valid reason, Many of them may not be for valid reason. Nevertheless, any business manager has to be very conscious of these risks that lay ahead of us in order to achieve this target. And particularly, the kind of requirement that is there, our dream for the 12th, 13th fire year plan is to reach a billion tons. Now, to reach a billion tons in the 13th fire year plan, certainly it looks like a dream today. We only hope that 2000 when is that? 22, 23. Uh, some of us will look back and say, yes, we could have achieved a billion tons. And that is what the challenge we are looking at. And that, to, in order to reach, achieve that kind of challenge, we are looking at the application of this uh, frontier technologies like the geospatial technology in all three phases of our mining. As you know, the pre-mining, that is your surveys, exploration, the baseline data of the 
environmental situation, land use pattern, flora, fauna pattern, because the anecdotal basis, uh, ba anecdotal based uh, clearances is no longer uh, really, we should be uh, agreeing to that. It has to be based on very transparent and hard facts, hard facts and situations. So pre-mining, we look at uh, uh, these situations, we already we are using and uh, uh, some of the experts who are here would also know that there is a lot of potential uh, for us to adopt these technologies and also further emerging technologies in these areas what I mentioned in the pre-mining areas. And uh, during the mining we have uh, some of the issues that is uh, monitoring of the emissions etc. the real time monitoring and particularly in the open cars we have a couple of issues both partly environmental more related to the safety that is the dump stabilities you know uh, the environment clearance accorded to us gives permission to go the external dumps up to 90 meters in fact in Sengreni we were getting up to even 120 meters now the stability of those dumps is a very very uh, predominant issue for us both from the safety point of view and the environmental management point of view and also the bench stability is also very important again from the safety point of view these are all the areas where we already are applying certain technologies GIS based GPS based the leader what they call the mm, the laser uh, uh, detection based uh, uh, ranging uh, systems we are already applying and we hope to mainstream that in all our minds not only current minds and also the future and much of the significance that has not been given earlier was about the mine reclamations. So if one has a uh, possibility, at least a theoretical or a technical possibility, one would like to see that your, once the coal is taken out, whatever coal that was available in the mines, particularly the open cast mines I'm talking about, we would like to restore the mine to the pre-mining situation. Very often it is not possible because some void is created uh, because of the taking out of the coal, particularly where the stripping ratio is very low. Suppose if the stripping ratio is only, let us say, one is to one, half of it we have already exhausted. Therefore, it may not be possible to bring up to the ground level, but where the stripping ratios are very high, our endeavor is to see that near pre-mining situation is restored. That calls for a huge amount of uh, application of the geospatial technology, which we are doing on a pilot basis in a few mines, but we would like to scale that up and fully mainstream into all our mines, whatever 160, 170 open cast mines we are operating today and many more we will be opening in the future. Not only the physical restoration, but also recreation of the flora, fauna and the vegetative systems. Again, for that, both to do it and also to monitor, we would like to utilize this uh, uh, technology. Another area, some of you are familiar with the uh, generally coal mining and also sort of partly deserved uh, criticism we have is the theft of coal, particularly large scale theft of coal in some of the places. We are at it already, we are working out on a, not on a pilot, almost, almost on all vulnerable places, GPS based truck monitoring system so that you need coal, uh, is coal laden truck, we would like to uh, monitor its uh, movement whether it is from the mine head to the uh, to the uh, dumping place or a loading place it is going or some of them are being mischievously diverted by some vested elements uh, in the process both gps based and also on the uh, you know monitoring uh, based technologies also we would like to apply and uh, that is already in the process some of you may be aware and we would like to ensure that the, if this kind of technology is applied so that that mischievous uh, operations which the some of the areas particularly the West Bengal particularly Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and even Orissa is known for we would like to control this uh, uh, malady that is uh, existing in those places. I am happy to share with you that uh, some of the coal companies in some of our mines we already are utilizing this uh, what we call the OITDS the operator independent truck dispatch system which is again uh, geospatial uh, enabled uh, technology. What it does uh, basically is like, you know, in a huge mine, we have some uh, quarries or di uh, districts, whatever we call, several places uh, where a shovel 
with about five, six uh, dumpers uh, combination, it works. So what, often what it happens is, now in some places where the shovel is working, the dumpers are already queued up. They are lying, uh, you know, standing idle. Yet another place, the shovels, uh, shovel is idle because the dumpers have not reached. So in order to optimize that, so that the, uh, the capacity of both the shovels and dumpers is optimally utilized, this technology is basically used. It is yet to really fully stabilize. So what it does basically is the signal is given to a truck operator that uh, so and so shovel is uh, likely to be vacant so you should be going to that particular uh, shovel instead of pre, you know only one particular designated shovel which obviously uh, reduces the uh, idle time of both shovel and uh, dumper which we are under you know experimental kind of situation we are uh, doing and unless the full package of that whatever is estimated of this package unless it is done and a thorough evaluation is done and a cost benefit analysis is done, we may not be able to expand it to many projects, but we are very confident that it would uh, prove to be uh, uh, economical or cost benefit, uh, uh, you know, justifiable. These are all the uh, areas we, we, we think it has a huge potential. And of course, one of the areas you also, some of you must have seen, the uh, monitoring of the underground fire also is being done but possibly we need to really further improvise this technology instead of you know the secondary kind of a information one should one would like to see that exactly what is the intensity and what is the spread of the sp fire in the underground you know some of you may have read in this jaria coal fields and uh, the raniganj coal fields unfortunately are under fire for the last uh, several decades so they, we are undertaking a huge project to mitigate that in the form of, you know, by rehabilitating the people who have, uh, who have uh, become inhabitants on the top of this uh, mines under fire, so that we can open that up and quench the fire and take out the coal. There are huge amount of uh, challenges there, but this technology possibly can be improvised further. As a CEO of a coal company, particularly I am looking at a, a technology which is, uh, as of now, is not there, whether we can have geospatial technology based applications for exploration because both for the qualitative uh, uh, exploration and also the time and particularly the reach now some of the coal reserves as you know in the hilly areas thick forests almost uh, kind of a uh, particularly from the wildlife and forest point of view and also even from the land order point of view whether non intrusive kind of uh, uh, you know uh, exploration is possible using geospatial technology will be a big challenge i'm sure you know like a laser or a uh, X-ray or uh, whatever uh, rays we uh, use, maybe up to two, three hundred meters if we can get a reflection and uh, get the uh, exact profile of a seam, possibly that will enable us uh, very quickly and also more efficiently and also uh, uh, less costly once uh, if it is done on a large scale. But that is something we are really looking at so that it can really be uh, uh, applied. I'm sure that kind of thing can be done everywhere else, not only just in India or in coal India alone. Another area we are basically looking at would be in the mining operations, the uh, planning, mine planning and uh, mining time, both in the underground and in the open cast, and also the utilization of various kinds of equipment, both monitoring and also the processing processes, both mining process and the monitoring, that is where I do expect that this uh, geospatial technology does hold a uh, uh, lot of potential and we'll be very glad to look at that either on a pilot basis to start with and finally eventually to scale it up to the entire uh, area. Now, to sum that up, Coal India, as Mr. Narayanan was, Dr. Narayan was mentioning in the morning, is one of the largest, uh, the so-called, not really a correct word to say, but the one of the biggest landlords in the country. We hold 250,000 uh, hectares of land, 2,50,000 hectares of land. Even to manage this land uh, in such kind of environments where the huge amount of deficit you see in the governance at the cutting edge level, particularly the land management uh, areas, and the boundary issues between the forest and the non-forest lands, the ownership issues, our own ownership and encroachments, etc. We also, the CMPDI is working on, on, on that kind of uh, initiatives. Any of you who have either have already some technologies or application solutions or planning to develop, 
we'll be also very we'll be very glad to invite you you can get in touch with the cmpdl and work with them in the land management side but more efficiently not from the agriculture kind of thing but from our kind of uh, background how really we can uh, do it and finally the environmental management in terms of even the not only the uh, the emissions and you know, particulate matter, suspended particulate matter and emissions and so many things, water quality, etc. What we are doing through the sample analysis, if uh, uh, this geospatial technology uh, is uh, possible, then not only we can do on a large area, like what I am saying today, not only in the mine, but in the entire region we can do. Our spread today is about 2,000 square kilometers. Now in 2,000 square kilometers is a huge amount of uh, uh, area, uh, you agree with me. That not only the real time thing, but uh, temporarily also, the over a period of time trends we would like to see and we would like to undertake mid course corrections if the things are not as well as uh, they ought to be or rightly we will face the criticism, uh, absolutely there is uh, no issue at all. And it is our commitment that by application of this kind of technologies, particularly in the environmental management, forest conservation, environmental protection areas, not merely to confine to the EMP, uh, EMPs, you know, the environmental management plans that are, uh, we are uh, under the law, under the statute, under which they have given the clearances, environment clearances, forest clearances, we are supposed to conform or comply to those uh, uh, standards. Our commitment, I have no hesitation to commit before the August gathering here is, much more than that, much more than that, we would like to see, suppose if your limit is, let us say, 50 units of uh, suspended particulate matter permitted, we, our endeavor will be to reduce it even to 25, and that kind of thing. Not just merely somehow willy-nilly achieve the uh, established standards, but we want to go much further, much beyond, much beyond the uh, statutory limits prescribed by the uh, regulators. And for that, we can only do, not in the conventional method, but by application of these uh, various uh, solutions, various applications which you have been talking about, geospatial based uh, 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 applications, we'll be very glad. The, uh, for us, the Ranchi based CMPDL is the nodal uh, agency. They have a huge amount of technical expertise, but they will be very glad to receive any kind of innovative solutions, applications and uh, proposals. And they will evaluate and they will take a, a view on that what kind of uh, solutions we can really use. As I said, to summarize uh, all three stages, pre-mining, mining, and post-mining, uh, that is a rehabilitation, mine rehabilitation and reclamation areas uh, also. This is in, in a nutshell what uh, the Coal India is looking at, uh, the kind of applications that are really possible uh, from the geospatial technologies. Thank you very much.